Okay, so this is the one that's been sketched and then I have another sheet of paper. This is where I'm going to test the colors first. Now, if you look at the painting, I'm just going to show it here and explain to you what's going on. Now, you always want to look at the lightest value when you paint. So if you look at the lightest area of the berries and the blueberries, obviously, this is the lightest part. So you want to see the highlight part. So we're going to paint all the highlight parts, which is the watered down version of all the paint colors that we're going to do today. And then this, okay, so this whole area might be purple, but the purple here is actually lighter in value compared to the purple over here, right? So we're going to build up from light to dark today. So if you look at it, there's not that many colors going on. So I would say like yellow for your banana, green, this is like a sap green, and then you have a bit of a sap green here. You can mix it with like a brown shade to get it to it, or a blue to get it to a deeper shade. So maybe three colors now. You have the red for the strawberries, um, and a bit of a crimson color for the outside of the strawberry. Inner part of the strawberry is a bit reddish, vermilionish. Um, and then the outside is a bit of a crimson color. So you don't need too many colors actually. And then after that, you have the blueberries, which is like a Prussian blue color, a warm blue tone. And then after that, you have this color here. So this color here is a bit of a... It's purple, yes, but learn to look at... It's not the purple that you get straight from the palette. You need to mix and match the purple. So this one has a bit of brownish tones to it. So we're going to mix that as we go along. Okay, make sure that you keep all your drinks to the side. Don't accidentally drink your watercolor water. Every now and then, if you have like a... Your like your laptop and all that, you can transfer this picture to your laptop and have a look. But every now and then, we'll just go back to this image over here. So now I'm going to swatch the colors that I'm going to use for the artwork over there first. That we want to use, the first one is a yellow. Now we want to actually water down the yellow by quite a bit so it comes out to a very light shade. I'm just going to mix on this palette because I'm going to use the same colors in the 12 palette anyway because I don't have a lot of mixing space here. Now in terms of values, you want to make it add a lot of water but very little pigment. So I'm actually not touching the paint here, I'm just using whatever residual paint that's over here. So I'm just making it really light. So the more water I add, the lighter it becomes. Now observe the colour of the banana. It's not this colour, it's not a bright yellow colour. Because bright yellow is what we reserve for the outside of the skin, the peel. The inner part of the banana is usually much, much creamier and lighter in colour. So you want to add more water to that. So you want to get like a really light colour like that. Okay, so that's the first colour. Now the second colour we're going to do after that is a red colour. So I'm going to take a bit of that. I'm going to mix that. So the inner part of the strawberry is going to be really light so I'm just going to add a lot more water so all these are just like basic what we're going to do first is to do like flat washes for everybody first now if I were to add more water I'm going to see, put my cup there like let's say I rinse my brush I'm going to tap off the excess here it's going to be much lighter so it's almost like a pastelish pink colour so you don't actually add white to your paint when you do watercolour because white is actually an opaque colour. With watercolour, you wanted to make it as transparent as possible. Uh, so that's what happened. Oh yes, the fan for overheating. That's good, that's good. Um, let's do that once I hit 50%. Because I'm not charging it right now. Last session, I was charging it and doing a live at the same time. So that probably contributed to it. Okay, so we have pink, and then after the next one we have is a green. So we want to create like a light green color. So this is a darker green. So I'm going to add more water to it. So just practice doing this first, get comfortable. So you have a darker one and a lighter one. Obviously, as you go on to the third level, there's going to be a shadow as well. Uh, so the shadow tones will be much darker after that. Okay, the next one we're going to do is a crimson colour. So crimson is... So right now, we're identifying all the colours that we need for today's artwork. So that you don't... So when I mention, okay, we're going to take crimson, it's this one. If we're going to take red, it's this one. We're going to take green. I'm not going to identify them too much by the paint names because some of you might not be using like artist grade paints uh, so they're usually not labeled 
and then a lighter one is this here now just to show you what the difference is between like a warm and a light color um, so cool colors usually have reddish tones to them while uh, so bluish tones to them cool colors have bluish tones warm colors have reddish tones to them so i'm just gonna make it really dark so you can see this is a warm color this is a cool red you see the difference a warm red and a cool red so warm red is usually a bit more fiery it's more orangey um, while the other one is more of like a bluish tone it's more purpley crimson colors so like your rose madder your alizarin crimson your queen of Credone magentas all those are cool colors whereas scarlet ferrari red um vermilion um what else yeah so all those like pyro red all those are like really bright warm reds okay and then after that we have the blues now to get this green in the event you do not have a set green color in your palette because for example the basic 12, 13 color alpha palette doesn't come with them one color you will most likely have is the is a viridian green which is like a cool green color that is like that okay so this one here you can actually use them later for the the strawberry leaves right but for the sap green color let's say you only have that color so i'm going to put down a bit of that color that dark green color in order to make it lighter i am going to add some yellow to it i'm just gonna mix it in so i should get a color that's very similar to it after that so this color here so let me add more water Add more, mix it in. There you have it, it's quite close. Let me just rinse it off. So again, you want to add yellow to it. So if you have a cool green, which is a viridian green, add some yellow to it, then you get a bit of a sap green color. Okay, and the next one we're going to do is a Prussian blue. So the Prussian blue are for the berries. Okay, I'm just going to make them dark and then light just to see how it looks like. Okay, so darker, it will look like that. So it already looks like a blueberry here like that. And then let's say I make, were to make it lighter. So remember last week what we did with um, gradient, creating gradients. So as you go, you get lighter and lighter as you do it. Just keep adding water. So right now, in our first part of the painting that we're going to do today, we are all we're going to color the highlights. We're going to start with the highlights, then we move to the midtones and then the shadows. So which means all these colors here, all the light colors, all the light colors. These are all the highlight colors. Now the final color that we're going to mix is the oh no, we have the bowl as well. So we have the bowl. Okay, hold on. Let's do the 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 acai part. So it's a part of the smoothie bowl which covers a large area. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my crimson color, put it down there. So crimson plus what color? I'll get that. Okay, I'm going to add a bit of Prussian blue to it. Just a tap there. Alright, so just one tap of Prussian blue into the color there. I'm just going to mix it up. Is that an identical color? I think so. So just add a touch of blue and there you have it. You already have that color. Okay? Okay, good. So everybody got these colors down? Alright, the last part is the bowl. The bowl colors. So the bowl isn't exactly white. We can't just paint the bowl white. It has to have a bit of shadow to it. Um, so what it is is that I'm going to take a bit of... I'm just going to simplify it. Like add a bit of black mix it with a bit of brown just to create like a bit of a sepia color again i'm just gonna make a shadow like that you see that so dark water it down like that by the way if you don't have the exact colors that i have here it doesn't matter at all just as long as it comes out to roughly like the same color and all that that's okay that's okay 
right? So these are the colors that we are going to use for today. I'm going to keep this set of colors to my right, uh, to my left, sorry. And it's also so that you can test them out as you go. Oh, I did not just do that. Okay. Uh, so there we are. You can use magenta. Yes, magenta is great, actually. Oh, never mind. I'll, I'll just bring it over for reference half the time. Okay, so we are going to start with the lighter colors. And by that, we're going to start with all the yellows first. So we're going to be painting all the bananas first. So you see my yellow here? I'm going to make it really, really light. Where's the first banana? Here. So it's a trail of bananas. So this one, this one, this one, this one. No, this is a kiwi. Banana, banana. Dun -dun, banana, banana, banana. This one. Okay, so we're just going to paint all these ones first. Okay, that's a bit too dark. If something is too dark, what you can do is you can wipe off the excess on your brush and just wipe it off. Alright. We're just going to paint everything. The whole thing. Regardless of whether it's in a darker area, whether it's light or dark, the shadow. Even if you look at the painting and you see the light and dark areas, you're going to paint everything. Now, in areas where there's a bit of shadow, I might tap in more colour there and just let it set dry there. So the edges of the banana, you don't have to worry because later on we'll create like mid-tones and shadows. So we'll go over it with another layer and that's called glazing, which we also did in the first session. And that's going to take place when? When it's already fully dried, not when it's wet. So the paper I'm actually using today is, well, the cheapest paper I could find, which is Arto 200 GSM. Uh, I'm not even using cotton, it's just, yeah, Arto paper. Uh, no, sorry, cot um, cellulose, cellulose, sorry. Okay. So you see, if I wanted areas to be darker, like in the, when something is behind something, obviously there's going to be a bit of shadow, so I tap in more colour there. Tap in more colour there. It looks a bit more vibrant on camera, like the yellow seems really strong, but in real life it's, it's actually a bit lighter. Alright, so just use your brush and then just paint. Oh, the brush sizes that we need today, um, for the background of the acai bowl that's a bit larger, you can use like a size 8 brush if you have. Um, but for everything else, you could get away with like a size 4, 2 to 4, doesn't matter. I'm going to try using like a size 3 for all of it. This is the Princeton Aqua Elite series. This is the synthetic Kolinsky brush. Uh, I really like it. Actually, it comes with a nice fine pointed tip. Actually, what happened with this brush was that there were a few stray hairs. So what I did was I took a scissors and trimmed it off the excess, trimmed off the excess. Okay. That is that. Alright, so everybody, this is the first round. We want to paint this one. Now, the next color I want to paint is red. Red. Because I try to move from light to dark. So the next one I will identify are the strawberries. So over here we have three strawberries. A four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, the two strawberries that are open in the middle, what we're going to do is we're going to use a wet on wet technique with this. So with the strawberries that are opened up, cut, sliced open down the middle, um, you realize that they are red, whereas the ones that are showing the outside part of the strawberry, the skin with the seeds, those are a bit more cooler red. So they're more crimson in color. As for the seeds, now, you could paint around them, as in like you could isolate the seeds. I'll try showing one with it later. But if you have like a gouache paint, white color gouache paint, maybe make your life a little easier and use that. So I would use like a gouache paint or I would use like a white gel pen if I have one. So I have one. If you have one, try to use that. Okay, so the next one is a red. So what I'm going to do using the wet on wet technique, remember we used that last week. I am going to wet the because mm, I want it to be blurry on the outside right alright so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet 
the strawberry the entire strawberry now i don't want it to be too damp it's just just nice not too wet not too all right so i'm just wetting the whole area with clean water now i'm gonna take my red here i'm just gonna mix it a bit over there so what are we gonna do make sure there's not too much pain on it so the amount of pain is just like yeah just that much maybe a bit more okay just like that so it's not drippy or anything now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna So you see it's bleeding towards the middle a little so i just identify like how far you should be if your banana is still wet be very careful not to touch it so it's redder on the outside and it gets lighter towards the center. So I want to tap one more color on the outside here. Just be really slow and gentle with this. Um, which is why if your brush is too big, uh, you probably need to be a bit more careful. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to soften the edges with a clean brush. So you see you get like a fuzzy soft effect there. Can you look? So again, I'm going to rinse my brush, tap off the excess water. And then I'm just gently gonna taper that out. Just re-wet the center again. Is everyone okay? Very gentle, very, very gentle. You're just tapping the edge only. And then also because it's like a bit down the center, I'm just gonna put like... Okay, so this technique now I'm gonna do is a wiping technique. So if you notice, the strawberries have lines going through them. So I'm gonna use a dry brush and pull out the paint from the sides. Don't worry if it's looking a bit messy and muddy. This is just the first layer. This is just the first layer. We will be going on later on with like the mid-tones and all that after that. Okay, so that's that. The thing about watercolor is that it's okay if you make a mistake. It's okay. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. just carry okay okay so that's one over there like that Just make sure your strawberry is darker on the outside and lighter in the middle. If you can't, just wipe it off like that. Just wipe. Dry your brush and wipe. So this is a wipe technique. Okay. I'm going to do this one here as well. Again, I'm just wetting the whole area. Okay, so it's not too wet, not too dry. Now the thing about these techniques is that even though they might seem easy, but mastering the amount of water is actually a bit tricky. So you see the colors bleeding inwards? Gently just tap the sides. If your paint is not moving towards the center, what it means is that you didn't put enough water, your paint, which means your paper is too dry. OK, 
Okay, so if that happens, if your paper is too dry, it's okay. Just paint, just do the line. And then what, what you can do is you rinse your brush and then slowly just fade it out manually like this. Can is okay. Don't worry. Luckily, we're only going to use this technique for two strawberries. <laughs> All right. Wow, it is already eight thirty, and we have, we are barely getting started. All right. Okay. Now, while we're waiting for that. I am going to pin the other strawberries. So this one over here as well. So uh, for these ones, I'm going to use the crimson color, which is this one over here. So if you have like an alizarin crimson, let's just pull some of that out. So if you observe, it's darker, this area, and then the light is hitting the strawberry on this side. So I'm going to start with the darker areas here. It's not too dark, but it's not too light either. Um, it's a bit more watery. So for this one, I'm you can leave the seeds out like that if you wanted to paint around it. Um, but it's going to take a really long time. So usually I just prefer to just paint the whole thing. And then later on, I'll just use like some white gouache or like some white, a white gel pen to just paint it over. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so now that that's done already, I've painted half of the strawberry. It's actually a bit cream orangey on that side. So I'm going to take a bit of the red here. I'm going to mix it into that crimson color that I have over here. I'm just going to add it to this area. Now there's a highlight on over here. So I've got to be really careful with that. Now that you know how hard it is to paint, the next time next time you buy an artwork or you ask people why do you charge so much, this is why. <laughs> For something to be done in 10, 10 minutes is sometimes 10 years worth of practice. Okay, so you see the colors are getting lighter as I go outwards. That's where I'm trying to create a highlight. I clean my brush every few strokes I clean. And then I just gently, my wipe, at this point, my brush is not dripping wet at all. It's actually relatively dry because I'm trying to just move the colors around, push the colors outward. Ken, you can make sure, um, so the question for, can you use white watercolor? Yes, but make sure your white watercolor is thick, as in like it's not diluted at all. So um, you can squeeze the paint out and then after that, use like a, dryish brush can be a bit damp but not too watery and then slowly dot it over i'm just gonna cover all that up so that's one over there and then there's one here as well so identify learn to see where all the dark areas are like for this strawberry it's on this side So once you see, okay, I've covered the dark areas. You can tap on for to make it darker, but don't worry about that because later we will actually add more shadows or highlight. So rinse off your brush again. You can see my water is this color at the moment. Okay, what I can also do is to paint a light wash completely. Like that. I'm gonna add a bit of red to it over here. Now you don't want the light areas to be too light either because you won't be able to see the strawberry seeds later on. If you look at it, once the strawberry starts to curve inwards, this is, there's also a bit of shadow on the other side. So I'll just Carefully tap that on. So sometimes this area looks a bit too light already. I'm gonna tap on more. 
So you want to work really fast. Um, also, the reason why I don't want to switch on the fan is because the fan dries out the paint very quickly. Then you don't get much time or move to... Uh, also, one reason why you might get like watermarks on your paper, uh, it's very prevalent, especially when it comes to cellulose paper. It happens on cellulose paper. Um, I'm using cellulose, but again, it's really your control. So I don't really have any watermarks so far, cause you you so cotton paper is basic a, a lot more forgiving in that sense. Okay, so you've got two. I'm going to paint the uh, raspberries next. So raspberries are a bit lighter. I'm just going to paint a light shade. So raspberries, I am going to add to the same color. So it's the same crimson color. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bit of magenta or purple. So if you have like a bit of a purplish color, you can add to it just to make it a bit lighter. So the color that I'm looking for, the... So do you see that? So the, even though they're all, they all look red, but they're all different shades of red. So this one is more of like a warm red. This one is more of a pinkish red. And then this one is more of a deep crimson red. Okay. Now sometimes if you realize that the paint is not behaving in a certain way and all that, it's, it might not be your fault. It might actually be the watercolors themselves. Um, and actually if you see, you're only using, when you're painting paintings of this size, the amount of watercolour you actually use is so little. So sometimes your watercolours really do last a long time. And the good thing about like artist grade paints is that you re need, really need very little paint to get a lot. So the paints basically last you oh, forever and ever. Um, but okay, if you were to ask me what colours do I replenish the most often, um, burn sienna. Burn sienna, um, my greens, like sap green, viridian, uh, yellow. Yellow will occur not so much. But usually the reds, the blues, um, these are the colours that I recently topped up like rose madder again after so long. So I'm just doing a light wash for all of these. So there's another one here. Okay. Because this one, this dark area is in the middle. Just gonna tap it right down the center like that. And the shadow part at the bottom here a little. Okay, that looks good. And one more raspberry here. Okay, how many of y'all have gotten to this point? Okay, if y'all have gotten here, not yet, I'll, I can wait. Do you need a break? <laughs> Big hole of burnt sienna. I love burnt sienna. I love burnt sienna so much. I don't even have a spot for burnt sienna. So I actually just replenish my burnt sienna over here. Um, and this no burn. Yeah, and this one is light red. I'm trying out a new color. This one is rose madder. And this was um Prussian blue that I actually saved from a tube. For some reason, it just. Yeah, I need to add more water and put it back on. Okay, so for those of you who have a, like a palette like this or even half pans, to rehydrate your colors, what you can do is to use like a mist bottle like that so that you don't use your brush and try to scrub, you know, scrub out the paint because that would damage your bristles. So what you can do is you give it a spray, spray your entire palette prior to using so that you moisten all the paints and they'll be ready for use. And you don't have to worry because watercolors will just dry out automatically on their own, so... Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I'm... Okay, okay. If you haven't finished like the strawberries and all that, don't miss out. Uh, maybe just because a lot of strawberries are repeated, repetitive, right? So you can just skip and 
continue to the raspberry first. I cannot tahan this green mark over there, so I'm just gonna tip it over and ignore that it exists. Okay, so I've done um all the raspberries, I think. Let me see. One here, one here, one here, one here, one here. Okay, good. Uh, since I'm here, I think what I'm gonna do as well is that I am going to do the bowl. I'm gonna make it like a light dish, like brown color with a bit of black. So the color I'm gonna make is this color here. So it's a bit of like a brownish sepia. Okay, what I'm gonna do is paint the... So this one we're gonna use the length of the brush. Just pull it. Now you have to also make sure where you stop painting, the water's gonna pool there and it's gonna form like a shadow over there. So make sure to touch or even it up. This is going to be like the rim of the bowl. So by now, there will be two types of people. The first group of people will be like, Oh, this is simple. This is easy. It's not bad. This is relaxing. Painting is fun. And then the other group of you will be like, I hate painting. What am I doing? Why did I choose to do this? But no choice. I've already bought the paints and I just might as well soldier on. Otherwise, I'll feel guilty for spending money. <laughs> So, well, some of you might be suffering, some of you might be having fun doing this, but don't worry. And it's always, you know, at this point, it looks ugly to me, but it's always like that. You just need to keep going. It's always ugly at the start. Because sometimes people just see the end product, they don't see the process. When you realize that the process is... Frankly speaking, can be quite excruciating sometimes. <laughs> what am I doing? What am I do Don't under it's a you're not you're not the only person. I've been doing this for so many years and I still sometimes not sometimes, all the time. I get stressed all the time. Okay, so now I'm working on the greens and blues, so I'm gonna switch up. I'm gonna use my second cup of water, which is this one here, to color in the greens instead. Now, if my palette gets really dirty, like either here or here, like I'm working with a small area like that, so what I will do is that I will just like wipe off the excess paint. Alright. <gasps> what is the two? <laughs> The tech group. You're funny. Okay, right now we're going to paint the kiwi fruits. Now, if you realize the kiwi fruits are lighter here and they're darker at the back, right? Don't worry, we paint everything the same color. I'll just make your life easier first. Okay, let's start with the first kiwi at the back here. Now, you realize that not all the fruits are touching each other. Like some of them have gap gaps in between. No. Mm, this is a bit too dark. I actually want it to be lighter. So I'm going to mop up the excess. This is the shade of green that we're trying to get. Okay, not too dark, not too light. Yes, the most important thing is to enjoy the process. Because if you're doing something that you don't like or you don't enjoy, you're not going to have fun doing it. And I know this is fun to you, but there was a point. There are points. Okay, I'm just gonna be honest and say this. I don't enjoy painting. Not every artwork that I've put out is something that I enjoy. Okay, because to me, this is work. At the end of the day, it's work. I think to every artist out there, at some point, they would have felt this way. When something, when your passion turns into work, when you feel obligated to make money out of it, it's not the artwork that you... you because sometimes you... You can't always paint things that you like. When it's a hobby, you know, like you're doing this for fun, your your rice bowl doesn't depend on it. You can yeah, paint whatever you like. But sometimes in 
an artist case or my case I don't consider myself an artist I'm just like I'm just like somebody who runs a shop and happens to have learned how to paint I feel that I wish I could you know hone one thing and be have tried my own develop my own style and just work on one style but the reality is that I have to try different subjects to see what you guys like you know because I need to put myself in your shoes and think of what you enjoy painting you know some people like food some people like still life some people like that and if I don't know the difficulties of painting certain subjects we wouldn't be confident to tell people oh you know I painted this I know what you need precisely I know what so in my case like well if I had it my way in the beginning I told myself I'll just paint fruit I'll just paint food all the time because that was what I liked that was what I thought I was good at you know but because of the shop I forced myself to try different subjects like okay I'm going to try landscape I'm going to try people I'm going to try like waterfalls water seas and because people ask me like okay can you do a tutorial on this and because uh, a huge part of me is a people pleaser who doesn't know how to say no I'll be like okay can 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 I'll get back to you in like a week or so so that has always been my um, I guess my outlook when it comes to art like don't never say no because I can't say no <laughs> it's not a good thing but it's helped me progress a lot actually to be honest Oh, gardening so nice. I have cats already, so I'm like, okay, that's cats are so much easier to keep alive than plants, guys. Okay, but that doesn't mean that when I finish an artwork, regardless of how much I enjoy or didn't enjoy it, the thing is when I start an artwork, if I start it reluctantly, um, I try to change my mindset halfway as I'm painting. Like to me, it's not about whether I enjoy it. What I think, what I have in my head is like, hey, I think people really like this. And I think of you guys. And you guys really motivate me a lot. I'd be like, I'm sure somebody's going to like it. Or, you know, somebody will be able to relate to this. Or this is going to make somebody smile or happy. Um, and that has always been my motivation when I do artworks like for Instagram or for the shop and all that. Uh, yeah yeah so your happiness is mine in a very very cheesy way okay now i am going to paint the blueberries here the blueberries are a bit dark but okay let's do it anyway all right so let's use a blue here if you don't have like a prussian blue like this color so for example, this Prussian blue looks like that, right? So it's more like an indigo color. If you only have like what, um, let's say you have an ultramarine blue. So don't use this blue because if you use this blue, it doesn't really, it doesn't match at all because the blueberries are a warm blue. This is really bright blue. Um, so if you only have that blue, what you want to do is let's add a bit of black to it. And there you have it, you have a very close color after that. So this color, champo sikit hitam. And then you'll get like a Prussian blue color. Just, just paint a bit. A bit, a bit. Okay. I like your painting style. Oh, I love you too. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I don't know, that means so much. Especially when I have like no idea what I'm doing. Uh, I think there are periods that you just feel like a bit lost and like... <sighs> you don't know if you're good at it. Like, sometimes I, I do compare myself to other artists. Like, I get jealous like, oh, they get to work on their one style and this is their signature style. Like, you know, they get to produce their own products and all that. Um, but then... I realize that I'm also lucky in a way. Like I get to try so many different products. Like I get to interact with all of you as well. Um, and that is, you know, like if I was just like a full time artist doing like just one thing, would I be? Would I feel as fulfilled? I don't know. I think 
I find the most meaning when I share. And I think for a long time, I think we weren't sharing. There was no workshops. And I was very reluctant to do all these live videos, to be honest. Like online workshops, people like, oh, this online workshop is the way to go. When are you going to do... I even like researched like webcams and I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. Da, 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 and then... <laughs> and I never ran through with it. Okay. Uh, good. Let's do it together. COVID is hard. COVID is not... It's not going to end at this point. So I was like, we were actually thinking, okay, um, well, we can run workshops again. So we never really thought about doing online workshops and all that. or Because we thought that, oh, numbers are getting better. Um, eventually, we can open again. So we were looking forward towards that. But I guess in the past two months, the reality is we're probably not going to go back to normal in a long time. Uh, given the numbers right now and all that. So instead of just waiting for things to get better... Um, yeah, let's just, let's just do this together. I'm glad you guys find this therapeutic. Because when I do this alone, it's... I actually paint much faster when I'm alone because... And I don't really like sit down and oh you know chill enjoy the process because I'm like okay okay because I use natural light to paint I I actually never paint at night because I don't use um artificial lighting so my time limit is always between like uh, twelve to like five o'clock and I'm always rushing to finish so that I can post by post the image by evening. So it's not really, a, it's actually a very stressful thing. And then what I do is I just sit at the desk to paint non-stop for like five hours in a row. And that is how you get neck pains, people. But, so, my neck pains, my shoulder pain, so the pain that I have is actually the thromboid muscle. So the thromboid muscle is actually in between your, so imagine these are your shoulder blades and this is your spine down the middle. It's actually between the shoulder blade and the spine that's where my pain is and i keep thinking it's oh what is it what is it like <laughs> i do exercises every day like stretching and all that and nothing has seemed to work until until google told me that that is due to stress number one stress number two uh not enough sleep and number three why is number three I think number three was oh yeah um long long durations of inactivity which i feel is unfair because obviously my arm is working and my brain is working just that my body is not moving okay doing kiwi good okay look at my blueberries they're all the same tone right they're all the same tone now so if you look at the blueberries in the picture, you realize that there's light and dark. So we are going to do that in a bit. Okay, the reason why I'm not doing a lot of wet on wet technique here with you guys, we are doing a lot more glazing today, is because if you're a beginner and I'm doing like, oh, okay. So usually when I paint these blueberries, what I'll do is like, okay, when it's still wet, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap more color where it's and I'll create the shadows on the spot. But the thing is, when you're a beginner and you don't have a lot of water control, what happens is that the whole thing just, all your water just spreads out. And everything's just going to be the same color. And it's just going to be chaotic. And you will be very unhappy with the result. So I'm taking like a different approach with you today. Um, it's, I guess, better for beginners as well. So you understand. like, and it's, But it's a bit slower. But it's a bit slower to admit. Okay, so now the next thing that we can paint is the... Oh, okay. Shall we paint the background? No, let's paint the... Let's go back to the bananas now. Now that you have done with this. Painting food. I think you only want to paint food, right? Actually, to be honest, I took such a long time looking for an image to paint. I actually wanted to do like Malaysian food. Like um, Indian food and all that. But then Indian food was all... There was like a lot of roti and all that. And then 
if you don't draw them properly or you don't really have like you yeah because everybody's image is going to be different i wanted an image that was easy for everybody to paint and follow um so i thought like this one just has shapes like circles squares tri extra circles triangles oval heart shapes ah uh, whatever pillow has not helped me either because I am a slight sleeper, shouldn't be a problem. Uh, anyway, anyway, I'm going to take, right now, I'm going to take a bit of yellow ochre here. I'm going to put it down the palette here a bit, just going to make it light. Now, where am I going to put yellow ochre? Now, if you realize, the center of the, the center of the banana is slightly darker and also at the edge here because that's where the shadow forms you're looking at the side of the banana okay let me draw a picture so your banana is like that right so yes the center of the banana and the corners so now we've already painted the entire banana yellow now right now we're going to apply color over here the yellow ochre here to make it darker so it will be like a shadow now, in the middle here, that X area, how are we going to make it darker as well? Because right now, it's a bit too light. So, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to take a bit of... Um, I'm going to take a bit of water. I'm just going to cover the whole area here. So, you're re-wetting the whole area. D don't worry. You won't pick up the color at the bottom very a lot. Now, you're going to take that yellow ochre color and you're going to tap it down the middle and just let it dry like that. Okay, so you look, you, you look at the picture and you look at this again. It has that same smudged effect. Bole? Bole. Musty bole. Asumapum bole. Sometimes, even though I don't know how the outcome will look like, I'm like, I tell myself, okay, one, it's okay, one, it's okay, one. Don't panic yet, don't panic yet. Okay, my real question is what if we don't finish this tonight? Are you going to continue tomorrow? Okay, so that's the edge. And then we have also over here a bit. You see that? Do you see the shadow there? It's very minimal, very light, very gentle. And it must be darker than the yellow that's on top, okay? Otherwise, where's your shadow? What's the point? That's the point of doing extra work if you can't see the results. I'm going to do all the edges first, then we're going to do that. X marks the spot in the middle. And then later when that dries, we will add on the banana seeds. And this one has some as well. Okay, yeah, yeah. Actually, when I paint, I'm a lot more chin chai. Man. But then, for the sake of this video, I'm going to do. I'm doing things much slower than I really do. Usually, I'm like, okay, stop, 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 stop. Okay, next, 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 next. Hmm. Alright, so now let's do the shadow as well. So what I'm going to do, remember just now what I said. Now, I'm going to use the light coloured water, not my green coloured water, to do this. Okay, now when I do the shadow area, I don't want to touch. No, when I'm covering the centre area, sorry. Try not to touch the edge of the other one. So I've actually painted down the middle like that slightly with a bit of colour. Now I'm going to take a bit of that yellow ochre. If you don't feel confident, please test it out on a separate piece of paper. Look, if you think this is easy, sometimes the easiest things are the hardest things. I want to do a fruit workshop 
for example. But everybody is saying like, huh, fruits are fruits so easy. It's just like colors only in blobs. No, no. Getting basic colors right is one of the hardest things to do. Okay. You make sure your water is clean. Okay, I'm just gonna like, just do this slightly. Can you see that? Can you see that? I'm gonna change my water. Please save this. Please save this. Do I have a choice? <laughs> do you know? Do you know? Out of all the painting methods out there, watercolor mediums, watercolor uh, oils, acrylics, gouache, watercolor is actually the most difficult. So if you're actually attempting this, know that know that you're trying something that's really hard. So good job. It's not easy at all watercolor might be you know one of the more affordable mediums but in no way does that mean it's easy and now okay no Okay, just gonna continue on. Potato slices, ta 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 ta. Yes, without the center potato, look like that. It just needs to be like a darker center, that's all. Don't worry about it so much. Okay, you also want to add a bit more shadow because it's under something. Okay, I'm just going to make it simple so it's easy for all y'all. Just do like a lighter color, but just do an, like a X shape or smudge down the middle. Okay, that's much easier, right? Okay, compared to other mediums, usually for other mediums, you just use them straight out of the tube. Which means like oil paints, squeeze, take a brush, paint. And you're working from dark, dark to light. The thing with watercolor is that you're introducing water. And how much water to put, how little water to put is so subjective. And then there's so many factors whereby the kind of paper is a is an issue as well. Take, you have to take these factors into consideration. Whereas with acrylics and oils, you're just covering the canvas. If you make a mistake, you just slap on more paint and then you can cover it up, repaint over. But with watercolour, if you make a mistake, it's too obvious to cover up. Hi, Michelle. Elementary just said stationery stores can open now. Good. <laughs> That's good. So, are you going to come now? I think just continue to buy online. Yeah, my cat's squeezing. Tony, are you okay? You okay? Do you have a hairball? Uh, give me a second. It's a sound that only cat owners will recognize. All right, all right, where are we? Okay, so now, now, for the kiwi, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take my green, 
So just see what I'm going to do now first. Now, so the darker part of the kiwi is at the back. Right? And you actually can see a bit of its veins coming through. So let's start with the one at the back here. Okay. So I'm just going to leave like a bit of like white spaces here and there, like the vein. Can you see that? And then I'm going to rinse my brush and then make it all lighter at the end here like that. Make it darker. Okay. It's the same here. So I'm just gonna Okay, for this one, you can actually choose to use a smaller brush. Just let me use a smaller brush. If your water control is not so good, you can opt to change to a smaller brush. Make sure the edges are like straight, smooth. You can concentrate the darkness at the back. And then I'm going to use the brush and just soften it out over here. Yeah, if you close the stationery shops, then how are you going to do any other thing? And for us, the problem was the closure of the printing shops. So because printing shops are all non-essential as well, we couldn't print like calendar cards for two months. We couldn't reprint name cards. Um, a lot, almost all our watercoloring sheets have gone out of stock. We can't replenish those either. Um, so some people have also wanted to do workshops with us, online workshops. But the problem is we can't even get supplies. Like I don't have enough palettes and all that to go around because we're reserving like the palettes for you guys. So, ay, very susa. Okay, so this part is the shadow. This part is also the shadow, very similar to the banana case. I'm just gonna let it dry. Today is... Can you believe it? It's already the middle of the month. Half the month is gone. I don't know what we have achieved this month. Okay, So you see what I've done? Is I have just done zigzag lines. <laughs> I hope this pandemic will end soon. Yes. Um yeah, we hope so too. It's been it's been really sad actually, even at the shop, because um we were not even bothered to you know, like decorate the shop or make anything look nice. So all the new incoming stock has just remained in boxes. Because there's no point to display any of them, you know? Uh, that's yeah that's how things have been okay so for this part you see that the the colors are concentrated more in the middle here i'm just gonna cover them more, more. and then i'm just gonna rinse them out as i go outwards so again with clean out your brush clean your brush tap off the excess on your tissue here and you're just going to smudge out the edge so that's what I'm doing on both ends for the kiwi. We don't want them to look too much like cucumbers. Then later on when it's dry, we'll paint on the seeds.
<laughs> like Christine. Yeah. Tony, you okay? Yeah, she seems fine now. So like, she goes through that like... I haven't heard that in a long time actually, the wheezing. Uh, there's nothing stuck. You know, sometimes when I go through long periods of not wanting to paint, I worry that it's something that I might lose passion for and never find it back. But then the moment I start picking up a brush and painting again, I realise that I really miss this and I love it. I, it's one of the things that I can genuinely say that makes me really happy. And I think I really enjoy, I used to really enjoy art gems and all that because art gems at the store on like random Sundays or Saturdays, usually on days where we have no workshops or if the, on the event the workshop is cancelled, uh, that's when I take the opportunity to run like art gems. And that's when seeing all of y'all, like, you know, all of us so aimless and not knowing what to paint and all that come together and like try to create something or just enjoy ourselves on the weekend, have that kind of purpose. It's, it's a really nice thing. And I used to not... Well, it's not that I used to. I mean, I, st I get jealous that you guys have weekends because for us, weekends is work. But when you come and hang out with us, it makes us feel like we are part of your weekend as well. You know? So it's like we're hanging out with friends, but at work. Oh, thank you. No chance to visit? It's okay. One day you get to visit. Oh, thanks, Izzat. <laughs> thank you oh you never skip our stories that's so, so sweet thank you thank you okay so it's starting to come together slowly slowly I'm going to like add a bit more shadow Okay, don't worry about the colors now because we're going to make it pop slowly. Alright, so now that I am... I'm just going to let the kiwis dry for a bit. Um, so right now I'm going to work on the strawberries here. So I'm going to go back and do a crimson. Okay, I'm realizing that this part I... can't talk too much already. I'm just going to like paint more. And explain what's going on instead of like rambling on. Okay, so now I'm going to put on the next layer. Okay, so for areas that I want darker, you realize it's a bit of a dark area here, so I'm just gonna add a bit of like dark brown here. So what I'm doing now is that just making it very diluted, not too dark. I'm actually painting this raspberry here. So if you can see up close, I've already done like all the individual segments. And then what I'm doing is that I'm adding a bit of shadow around each, the side of each one to just give it some depth. So as I was saying, don't do all the strawberries, just do one because I think y'all will be here the whole night if you try to do all of them. Uh, so just do one and then just let it sit there, okay? And then you work on the rest on your own time later. Uh, I'll try to do another one again since the sound went off. Okay, so with the raspberry, what I'm going to do first is that 
I'm going to color it down the middle so that's where the shadow is, right? Okay, now I'm going to do the segments around the raspberry. So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six. So all these details are not things that you paint, that you draw on with a pencil. Um, because you can just like create the lines as you paint, you see. So this is more of a top view. This is a side view of the raspberry. Yeah, some of you have commented that I have a deaf grip when I hold my brushes and pens. I do. I used to get hit a lot as a child. Um, like the teachers at school would like hit me on my knuckles. My parents would do it as well because they tried to get me to stop holding my paintbrush this way. Again, so sorry everybody that the sound went out. I'm really sorry that you have to restart the video. Sorry for the interruption. I I managed to save the video. Um, so later I'll re-upload it in case you missed out something. So second raspberry there. Oh, there's another one here. This one you don't see so much of the top. So this is more of like a sad view. By the way, when you paint, when I paint things like that, I'm not trying to aim for realism. This is an illustrative sketch. Okay. You just want to convey the emotions and the feelings that the painting is giving you. Okay, so that is that. So it will look like that once you have done. Are you done? Are you done? You're not done. I know you're not done. But, as they say, time waits for no man. And I can't wait for y'all forever. So, I'm just gonna move on. Because otherwise we're gonna be here the whole night. And you can watch the video later. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to this strawberry down here. What I'm gonna do, if you realise that the strawberry comes in segments as well. So I'm just gonna segmentize it like that. Wow, well, y'all thought the first part is that it. No, that's just the first layer. Now we're gonna go to the second. Here. Soften it, soften it, soften it, soften it. Do you see that? By the way, sometimes when you're in the middle of the night, you're painting and you're tired and you hate everything you see. Your painting doesn't look great you feel uh, it looks crappy um, and you want to throw and burn the paper, don't. What I suggest is to sleep on it, go to bed, wake up in the morning. Chances are you will have a better mindset, you are less tired, you will be able to see areas where you can improve in the painting and um, well, natural sunlight always makes a lot of things better. So that's why I suggest you do sometimes. I would like more white on this area. But because I don't have that, I'm going to use gouache to cheat instead. So this is my holy grail. I have used this tube of gouache for the past two and a half years and it's still contains gouache it's still squeezable 
da, 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 da. So just squeeze that out there. And it hasn't dried out, miraculously. This is a 60ml tube. By the way, these are not paintings that you do in a single night. Um, this one sometimes... The, the thing about painting is that good things really take time and patience. See, the thing about putting white is that it looks very artificial. Like it's too white. It doesn't make sense. So what this technique does is that it, there's a very natural gradation. You know like it's part of the strawberry and all that. So what I have to do now is to make it less white, which is to go over the paint a bit, like smudge it out, so that it looks a bit more reddish. You see that? Same or not? So it looks like this here. Okay, goodness. Alright, so now it's starting to come together. Now I'm going to work on the strawberry on this side as well. Okay, maybe it's a good idea, it would have been a good idea to split this session into two days. I shall keep that in mind in future. Initially, I just wanted to do like a fruit tart and be done with it. But no, I have confidence in all of you. That's how, that's how much I believe in all of you. Actually, no, actually I, I underestimate because I think that You'll get bored if it's too easy. But not even I'm realizing that this is pretty hard. Okay. Yes. <laughs> exactly what Sue is saying is correct. When I paint, sometimes I think of it as doing makeup. So now you do the outline and all that. So you think about it when you do makeup, what you do first? You do your foundation, you do your base color first, right? So you just paint your entire face the same color. So whatever shade it is. And then you start building it up by uh, bronzing, by adding highlights and all that. So highlights is to make lighter areas stand up. So anything that you want to give it highlight, to make it more prominent, that's where you actually make it lighter. So in watercolour, we leave those areas out. So like all these areas are the highlight, for example. Uh, and then the shadow is where you want to apply bronzer and all that. You want to buff it in, make it blend very smoothly so that you don't see all the lines and imperfections. And then, then what do you have? And then you have the... Sorry, sorry. I hang for a while. I need to do this. And then you line it. So that's where your eyeliner techniques come in. And then you're adding your eyebrows and all that so that things don't look too flat on the fa your face. You want to give a bit more sculpt. A bit more depth. Otherwise, sometimes your paintings might look a bit too flat. Alright. What do y'all want to do once lockdown is over? Where do y'all want to go? Okay, okay, I know half of y'all will probably say stickerific, but other than stickerific, where? Okay, so... It's okay, if you guys are still at raspberries, it's alright, it's fine, it's fine, slowly, slowly. And that is my strawberries, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, okay. Oh, I still have one more raspberry here as well. You know what? Since you are slow, I might as well do it. Uh, alright, here. I'm gonna move on to the... 
I'm going to move on to the acai background after this actually guys so maybe continue your raspberries later another day and tomorrow or after this session because I think the background is pretty important Plant shopping, Penang, eating out. Good. Good, that sounds nice. Because everybody's just buying plants online right now. Alright. Go back home, down. That's good. I haven't seen. Ramen. Did you all know that Menya Shishido moved out of Jaya 1? They closed down. I mean, they, had, they, had, they were supposed to have a central kitchen somewhere else, but I think they. But it closed down in Jaya 1. Uh, it's quite unfortunate. I mean, it was so convenient to have them here. Alright, I'm going to paint the background first. So I'm going to work on... Remember that crimson colour we had? I'm going to mix a bit of blue to it. Okay, if it's too much blue, if it's the ratio blue to red is too much, you're going to get that colour. So I'm going to add more red crimson to it. I'm going to add some brown actually. Now remember, we are creating the base layer. So this is all going to be like very light first. Okay. You want it to be like light. I'm going to use a larger brush for this. I'm using a mop brush. So different brushes have different functions. So a larger brush will contain more water. And what that means is that I don't have to keep redipping my brush into the paint. But with a large brush, you also have to be a bit more careful so that you don't get paint everywhere. The reason why I don't do a lot of live sessions, I mean, I prefer, well, it's not exactly I prefer, but um, I usually do time lapses instead because time lapses are just so much easier. It's easy, but in a way, I don't like time lapses either because to paint with like a camera and the wires in your face for a long duration is can be a bit annoying. Um, and I feel a bit more pressure as well. To so we're going to create like a flat wash. Remember what a flat wash is? A flat wash is where everything is the same color. Now if you look at the acai bowl, like it's curving this way. So I'm also trying to have like the movements come in like that. Now you want to work fast, as fast as you can. Otherwise the edges here are going to dry up. And then it's going to get really splotchy. The reason why you want to use a big brush when you paint this is because if your brush is too small, you keep on picking up color like that. And what happens is that your paint becomes very uneven so because you might get, see, so some areas are darker, some is lighter. But you just observe. So it's the darker areas at the bottom, you can start painting at the top. And then as you get to the bottom, that's when you need to replenish your color. doesn't matter anyway because it's... um. It's going to be darker. So the reason why your paint is also getting darker per se is that um, the paints are getting less and less over here. So it's getting thicker and thicker, obviously. So I'm just going to like sweep, do some sweeping motions here just to make it darker as per the bowl. Just be very careful to go around the berries.
This is a Winsor Newton squirrel brush. It's I've had this one for quite a long time and I like that it comes to a nice fine pointed tip. So you see where I want the places to be darker, like all around all these berries, so I can tap on more color. But it doesn't, it's fine. Just create a flat wash first, because later on you're gonna create the shadow. Just make sure to get, be very, very careful when you're getting into all the corners. Don't paint over the subjects, the other berries, sorry. Are we going to open tomorrow? Uh, you mean like open to public or like are we working tomorrow? You're working tomorrow to send out your parcels? Yes, we are. Because cannot lah. Uh, we need to. We can't afford to close. Just let me tell you that. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to turn the paper around because I like to make things easier for myself. Now be very careful because at this rate you want the berries to pop. So if the paint in the background is going to look very similar in color or tone to the subjects on the top, that's going to then your berries will drown out. So the tones need to be very different. Okay, if you run out of color, that's why you have to mix enough colors in advance, if that makes sense. So that's where like a big watercolor palette area comes in handy. Because you have more mixing space basically, especially when you're using tube colors. When you're using like pen colors, because you can only mix so little at a time with a smaller brush. Because what's the largest brush size that can cover this area? Like I'm lucky this one actually does cover, but most of the time, if you're going to paint anything larger than A5, like A4 paintings and all that, you're better off using like a palette with tube paints so you get like a larger area of you get to pick up more color basically If you don't have a big brush, uh, you have to get a big brush eventually then. Because it's a, it's a limitation. It's like saying like, I want to cook for, I want to cook a kanduri for like 30 people, but I only have a small saucepan. You can't, you just can't. So it's, it's really dependent on, you need something for that purpose. So if you want to work within like your limitations, let's say you don't have a big brush, um, don't paint such a huge painting or what you can do is that uh, I guess you put more water make sure it's really really wet so that you can cover the brush as much as possible use the side of your brush when painting instead of the tip of the brush alone um, so that you can spread as much water as possible very in a short amount of time uh, that would be what I would suggest Uh, well, if you realize that you paint a lot of uh, large paintings, or you do, always have one bigger brush for the background. That's what your big brush is for. Because I think a lot of people, when they paint, they're like, oh, I don't paint big. But then, yeah, you paint small things. All the berries are small, yes. But then what about the background, you know? It's a huge part of the painting as well. Okay, progress update. Where are you all now?
Oh, I like where this is coming along now. Okay. Good, good, good. Come on, come on, we can do this. We can do this. So you know how I created this purple color? So it's a crimson color, right? Mix it with a bit of Prussian blue, which is this blue over here, okay? Now I'm getting pink all over the place. That's the problem when I'm doing live because oh, I get really messy. You realize that the paints on this side of the painting is darker than it is over here as well because that's because of a lot of the areas in shadow whereas if you look on the right side of the the picture it's a lot of highlights so actually i just want to paint like the base first and then we'll go over with multiple layers after that so don't worry about that Just curious how many of you have given up. Okay. Okay. The background. Don't worry. Initially I thought it wasn't looking very nice, but slowly slowly everything's coming together. So what the background helps because the background's darker. The background's gonna push everything to the surface and make it look make everything pop don't worry about getting it too straight at the edges because your acai might be like a bit more a bit less and all that okay now we're gonna get into the little nitty-gritty corners here now we're very careful because this area is mo most probably still wet um, so it's going to be much darker, so I'm going to use less water, more paint. I'm going to go in with a smaller brush because I don't trust myself with a big brush. I have seen people like, you know, Jason Chan, like for all these little fine details, he uses a size 6 black velvet brush. And I'm like, how? How do you do that? I don't understand. Okay. Now as we go in, it's going to be even darker. So I'm going to actually use even the, a darker version of the paint. So you can look. Because it's all going to be like in between the lines and everything. Now if you don't want to like disturb the paint that's on this area. What you can do is to get a sheet of. Okay, I'm going to use this sheet from the last workshop. I'm just gonna put it here so just to protect the painting it's damp but it's not completely dry you want to make sure all your corners are sharp not squarish or anything okay that's one some areas here usually when I start painting details that's when I get a bit quieter because I have to focus on the painting um, usually I'm painting like the highlights the first few parts it's not really as um, doesn't require as much concentration but then when I get to this part, I have to slow down my breathing so that I make sure that the lines are all clean and sharp. Okay, so you see I've already done like these edges here, so it's darker, right? Now the edges are a bit too dark, 
so they look really harsh what you want to do is you rinse out your brush and then soften it out okay just soften it out a bit okay good night hope about everybody who has to leave uh good night thank you for joining sorry it's taking longer than usual i'll try to choose like an easier subject in future but for those of you who are still here don't give up let's let's do this let's do this um i think it might take another 30 minutes i hope 30 40 minutes don't rush don't rush just take your time i would suggest like okay all these is, are things that you can do on your own later on focus on the larger areas and then like try to cover some of the berries and all that so areas that are very tight usually i'll make them as dark as possible So in order to make them even darker, the purple, I'll add like a bit of sepia or black to it. Thank you so much Annabelle, looking forward, thanks for tr trying it out. That's good, that's good. So nice to see so many people. I wanted to choose a subject that was a bit generic as well. It wasn't tied to any one culture, um, something that probably everybody should be eating more of but yeah acai is not exactly a an affordable an affordable meal or food ingredient um, but it has the nice and a really nice color i actually was considering like a banana smoothie bowl or something like that but the colors weren't as vibrant Amanda, you can do this. You don't need two days. So funny, when we started doing workshops, we were painting like 10 different subjects in one workshop, which was ridiculous. Because I was trying to teach as many techniques as possible. And then I realized that other instructors were just doing like one painting, one subject throughout the whole workshop. Which is probably a more effective way of learning. Try not to do too many things. But I wanted to give people more value. <laughs> Okay, and then now we have our bananas, moving around them. And usually I just use the other brush to smudge things up. Chicken. 
that's the thing. There's no point sometimes like, okay, um, I don't know if any of you have gone through this phase, but I think a few years ago, I went through this whole uh, gym phase. So I became a bit obsessed like every day before work without fail, like six days a week. Because there used to be, I mean, there still is celebrity fitness downstairs. Uh, so I used to go every single day before work. And I was exercising and weightlifting on my own without knowing if I was doing things right and all. But at my highest peak, which, which was just before the pandemic last year in February, I was able to do 75 or 80 kilo deadlifts. I was very proud of it as well. Um, but then, okay, obviously I can't do any of that now. Now I lift like 3 kilos and I feel like dying already. But at that point... Um, the thing with that was that it was affecting the way I look at food, which was very unhealthy because I was I didn't want to waste all that time in the gym. So I would try to eat really healthy, like eating cakes and all that, like carbs basically made me feel very guilty about it. Um, and then my relationship with food just got worse and worse. And then I had stress, there's a lot of stress as well and the problem with stress is that um, it affects your stomach because your gut obviously is affected, it's connected to your brain and I have so much digestive issues and I was restricting a lot as well. But then after I stopped, what the pandemic did is that I couldn't exercise as much anymore. And then I started to allow myself to eat a lot more carbohydrates again. And I realized that my body actually works best with rice. Uh, I can't really take a lot of wheat products. Like I can take wheat. If I do take wheat or I have to take this. Digestive enzymes. That's what old people do. Oh no, I just realized something. Like if I'm going to upload the video, these videos... You have to listen to all my nonsense as well. Like it's gonna be recorded permanently for the I'm just gonna shut up from now. Okay, so right now I'm just still continuing on with the acai bowl, the acai part of the acai. And I'm almost done. Alright, I'm probably going to add a bit more shadow later, but for now, I'm going to work on, let's see. Okay. I'm going to do the blueberries now, and then we're going to work on the leaves after that. Alright, so let's do... Now. So the first one, we have one over here. So that's where the pit is, right? I'm going to draw that out. Now, observe where the shadows are, because the shadows are here. And then there are shadows like at the bottom here as well. So I'm just going to put two lines here like that, so it looks like a... This is a dry... wet on dry. Then I'm just going to take my brush and just slowly taper out the colour to create like a shadow. That's one. Now, the, the, the moral of the story is if you want to eat cake, you eat cake. Okay? If you, because the thing about restricting yourself is that when you not allow yourself to eat things, the more you want it. And then you're more likely to eat more of it later on. So if you let yourself have cake, one piece of cake, when you want to have cake, you're not going to crave for cake in the middle of the night. Eat an entire cake on your own. You know? If you eat one cake, you'll just eat that one cake. You'll be happy and you'll move on. I think the problem is that... 
you know don't diet everything in moderation like even with like hobbies like art and all that um you know give yourself like there's no there's no rule where you don't have to make yourself feel guilty like okay i need to paint like 10 time 10 hours a week if you feel like doing it once a week one hour at a time go ahead and I'm just gonna rinse out as i get towards the center Okay, right now I'm creating like shadows for the berries. Do you see that? Yes, Amanda! That was my biggest regret of my life. I was never lactose intolerant. I was never... I was never gluten intolerant. And then what you do is that if you eliminate carbohydrates from your diet, your body learns to live without it. And then when you reintroduce, when you start eating them again, it just rejects all of it because it's not used to it again. Why? Why would you put yourself through that? How come nobody told me about this? Ah, so annoying. Yeah. Okay, so we are here right now. I like how I go from like crazy to like trying to be a bit more senile and explain stuff. Berries look What are your fruits of choice? Like for me, I think I eat too much navel oranges because they are because they're always on sale here at the Aeon downstairs. Um I eat a lot of pineapples. If they weren't so difficult to cut, I would eat more of them. Uh, I tend to like sour fruits, but apparently I shouldn't eat too much sour now. Um, what else? I admittedly don't eat too much local fruits. I think I should try eating more, but I think it's funny that the supermarkets here don't really sell them. You have to go to like Pasar Malam in order to get local fruits. So you, back when the Pasar Malam was still very active, so they, there's a Pasar Malam at Jaya one every Tuesday, every Tuesday evening actually. It's a bit sad because we used to go like after work and all that, you know. And um, even Pasar Ramadans and all that. But we haven't been able to go to one since, yeah, for almost two years now. They also have like a morning market on Thursday. Mm. Just be careful when you go out. Nowadays. Mango. Yes, I love mango as well. I don't like how Chinese people, like Chinese people believe like, oh, there's cooling fruits, there's heaty fruits. And so when I take away all the cooling fruits that I can't eat, the things that I'm left with, like surprisingly, you might, strawberries and mangoes are considered heaty fruits. I don't know how that classification works. Um, but a lot of the other fruits are all considered, yeah, cooling, like coconut, all that. Anything that is supposedly refreshing, those are cooling fruits. <gasps> I don't believe we're reaching the end. Okay, now it's 10 o'clock. It's okay, it's okay. We're making good time. I know I'm making good time. I don't know what uh, the rest of you. Where are you now? <laughs> uh, 20 people have left this. Oh, 
Okay. That's one. Later on, I might go over again with like a darker blue just to emphasize the, the shadow. So right now, it might be just a second layer. Rinse it off and then just taper it outwards. Okay, so when you see the painting like this, you might realize that because if you look at the blueberry, some areas are actually lighter and all that. Um, so I just want to show you a trick to create like even more prominent highlights. You can actually just take your gouache. So I'm just going to take like some gouache, right? So the areas where I see like more highlights, obviously I couldn't leave them out. So like around the ring of the fruit. So I'm just going to add it there just to make it pop a bit more. Like that. And maybe a bit here. Or maybe the center as well. Like even the raspberries that I painted earlier, let's say we want to add a bit more highlight to it. Okay, so what you want to do is just add white. Not on the whole thing, just like on each little... On each little... Pip. Do you call them pips? What do you call them? Little sections of the skin, you can just add a bit. Alright. Okay, just slide it up a bit. Yeah, slowly, slowly does the trick. Like you have to be patient, young Padawans. Just slowly, always have a. Sometimes I have no idea how the end result will look like, but usually as I get three quarter to completion, I start to envision what it's gonna look like after a while. Uh, I can slowly see it coming along. Now I'm just gonna relax for a bit. Actually, not really. I'm just gonna go over to the next thing. I'm gonna go over and start forming the what should I call it? The lines. So now that the lines have disappeared, I'm just going to go over again where I want the... So the highlights here, here, and then there's one that comes in over here. So I've created like the lines in pencil. Can you see that? Okay. It was the best place to get like smoothie bowls and all that. I'm not the most healthiest, but... Uh, okay, I wouldn't say I'm not healthy. I mean, I'm not the kind of person who spends money on things like that. Because <laughs> I try to make everything on my own. Oh, I guess not many of you would have known this. Maybe none of you would have known this. But I used to run a food blog. I used to do recipes, vegetarian recipes. And I did this for about... I did this for... Four years. I actually have a cookbook contract with MPH. Um, it was offered to me by, by the publisher in 2015, the year I started, the year 2014, sorry, the year before I started Stickerific. Um, and so the problem was I had to choose. Did I want to do Stickerific or did I want to do this or the cookbook? Because the cookbook would take up at least eight months of my life actually. But I thought about it, like, what was my purpose in, like, writing a cookbook at the end of the day? I had no intention to ever, like, open a restaurant. That's not what I wanted to do. Because usually when you, in Malaysia, when you publish, like, books and all that, right? Like, like non-fiction books. The reason why you do it is to sell your career. So, like, if you're a motivational speaker, you write books. 
um, if you are a chef, then you write a cookbook, all these kind of things. But for me, it wasn't really what I wanted, and it was going to take out a lot of time. And at the time, the graphics seemed like, oh, it was more fun. It was like, oh, I get to do journaling and stickers and all that. Um, at that point, I haven't started like painting very much as well, but I pitched the idea. I was like, oh, I could paint for the book and so all that. <sighs> My painting was so bad at that time, really. Like, why? But looking back, uh, I think that that decision was a good one that I chose to do this because I feel like I've helped more people than I could have done with a cookbook. I mean, the cookbook was like more of like an ego thing because I was doing the cook. I was like running my food website, my food blog for such a long time, and I guess you, when somebody recognizes your work you just feel like oh, okay i i want to see where this goes but sometimes just because something is something is good and opportunity is good it doesn't mean you have to take it uh, i feel like i took a bigger risk with this one not knowing if anything would even come out of it Looking good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks good. Acai smoothies. Uh, okay, uh, I have bought acai and tried to make my own one. Now, acai just is sour. It's actually not a sweet thing. To sweeten it, you have to add things like bananas. You have to add things like... um. You have to add bananas. You have to add like fruits to the smoothie otherwise it's just gonna be sour acai pure acai is just sour why didn't anybody tell me that okay takan lah expect everybody to tell me something but uh, on its own it's nothing you really need to add all those fancy stuff to make it really yummy like honey and all that uh, so yes I don't know what a really good acai bowl tastes like cause my homemade one wasn't that great in fact I bought my home. I bought sachets of acai from uh, from an from a store. I think they had a sale at that time. Cabana, Cabana acai, yeah, Cabana acai. And up to today, it's been like a year, an entire year. I still have three packets in the fridge, and I bought five packets, six packets. I still have three packets left. Cause remember, I can't have smoothie bowls because of bananas. Bananas hate me. Oh yeah, you can use mangoes too. That is true. Yes, acai bowls are full of sugar. Because I watched a documentary, not a documentary, I watched one of those videos like, oh, what are the foods that are actually high in sugar, or breakfast foods that you think are good for you, but actually isn't. Things like cereals. So, oh, I'm also sort of uh, intolerant and allergic to oats, which is why I can't have muesli, I can't have... So actually, to be limited in your food choices is... I see. I try to see it as a good thing because that way I don't have to spend so much time thinking of what to eat. I just know what I don't... I can't eat. Um, so sometimes I even have rice for breakfast. So I skip breakfast and I go straight to lunch. So it's with rice. Lunch is at... I have lunch quite early. I have lunch at like 11.30 actually. Okay. Do you know what I'm doing right now? Right now, I'm creating the shadows in the smoothie bowls. So what I'm doing is that this is a very dark line and I want it to be thick and dark because that's the shadow. And then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to rinse my brush and just soften out the corners here. So the, there's a bit of like... Make sure that the line is clean, don't go over the edge, the other side.
And also try not to touch this other line, the next line there, the next wave. Um, if it gets lighter, you can just tap on more colour to darken it. Sometimes if you don't know if your painting looks good, you want to like stand up. Okay, let me see again. Let me read. Can I eat banana? Paint bananas. Yes, that is a good thing. For example, you can't have a cat. Paint a cat. Draw a cat. Acais have no sugar. The acais in Asia have a full load of sugar. They're so sweet. So freaking sweet here. Yellow fruits are high in sugar. Okay, what other yellow fruits? Lemons. I used to drink lemon water every day as well. But nah. Well, occasionally I drink apple cider vinegar. I have a bottle. Um, what else do I take? Nah, now I drink a rice drink. It's called Nutri Brown. And apparently it's full of prebiotics. Uh, in an attempt to fix my poor malfunctioning stomach. It's a brown rice drink. So, carbs are not the enemy. I used to be so afraid of eating rice. To the point where I was really terrified to even go back to my mom's house because my mom would force us to eat me to eat so much rice. Mm, bad. That's such an unhealthy mindset to have. And you should always eat until to the point of satiation, which is to the point of being full. Otherwise, you end up snacking. And snacking is unhealthy because you just reach for anything that's near you. And usually you will crave for sweet stuff. Okay, so the edges here are also... Can you see what's happening? Oh, can you see? Can you see? Okay, um, may I ask, do we have an alternative if we don't have white colour? Do you have a white gel pen? Unfortunately, if you don't have any white around at all, there is no alternative. You have to get one of it. It's just one of those tools that... Uh, yeah, unfortunately, no. You have to get it. So you can actually buy like really small tubes of like... um. Of like... You can buy the smaller tube of white gouache. We do sell like small tubes of white gouache. I prefer gouache to gel pens, although gel pens are like a lot easier to carry around because gouache tends to be a bit more opaque. With white gel pens, as you draw, you have to be really careful because they after because they're not meant to really meant to be drawn over watercolor. So as you paint over them, what happens is that um, it picks up either some of the paint or the white becomes contaminated and becomes colored as well. Uh, but you can use gel pens, like like red, white gel pens for like dotting and all that. That's fine. But if you're covering like large areas of white, I would suggest getting like a, getting white paint would be the best. But if you don't have, it's okay. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. Okay, so you can alternate like certain areas are darker, some areas are lighter. Because again, depending on the light and the shadow, always look at the painting, the, the picture when you're painting. I'm always looking at the picture. Don't aga aga or try to guess and all that. Because you think you have good observation skills. Um, well, if you have good common painting sense, if you've done this a lot, yes, you might get away. But even I'm not that confident. So if you have a picture for reference, just use the picture for reference. And then this one. What are skills are you all learning other than watercolor? Ah, uh, okay. You know, if this was safe as a live video, I really don't know how. Yeah, 
you know, <laughs> should, should probably really stop talking because people who listen to this while painting on their own is probably not going to feel very hopeful about completing this painting on their own. Also, it's taking a really long time. Once they realize that the video is like five hours long, they might not even want to get started at all. <gasps> Guys, we are done. <gasps> Mango, durian, doodling, calligraphy. I've been. It's nice, it's nice, it's so nice. A lot of people think crochet is actually a good thing, like knitting. It's actually very therapeutic as well. Okay. I am gonna paint the leaves now. Remember what I said? What we color we're gonna do? We're gonna paint it like a bit of green and a bit of radiant to make it darker. If it's not dark enough, I'm just gonna add a bit of blue. Oh no, there's too much blue. Remember what else we have to do? We have to add seeds to the... Uh, we have to add seeds to the... to the bananas as well. And the strawberries. Okay, so now we're going to paint on the leaves. I'm going to paint all of them like the same green color first. And then we're going to add the shadows as usual. Okay, how bad is your painting? It's not that bad. It's not that bad. Okay, what you want to do is stand up. Look at your painting from a bit of a distance. Have some separation between yourself and the painting you look at it where where is it that you where is it that you feel that you're inadequate where did you where did things start to go wrong maybe that's the first thing you can identify so that in the future you can correct your mistakes or try to not repeat them um don't worry everything try to work on if you can't fix certain areas it's okay just proceed this is practice remember this is practice we're practicing practicing the techniques that we've learned and try to so even if you did a whole painting and maybe you only like you like only the blueberries i think that's a win in itself it's a success you managed to paint something you've never tried before and if you only paint once and you expect to succeed, uh, okay, maybe then I'm a not very good teacher then. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Maybe the fault is mine. Okay, now that I'm painting this, um, I have to admit that this is probably not the best for beginners. It's a bit complex. I'm sorry. But, but, don't, It's a lot of patience. Okay. I'm going to touch up the bananas. In. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bit of yellow ochre, a bit of burnt sienna, I'm going to try and make my Just rinse it out and soften the edges. I 
It's gonna make you a bit darker. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a bit of black I'm using a small brush for this. Make sure the colors are not too dark. I'm just gonna tap it. Just maybe three dots each. Three to four. Okay, so the same goes with the kiwi as well. Just kind of try and make the kiwi like a bit darker in certain areas. So I'm using a dark green right now. Like some thin lines, some thicker lines. For those of you who are still here, thank you for continuing. Okay, okay, that's good. Alright, so I'm going to take black again, similar to the banana. I'm going to do kiwi seeds. Now, kiwi seeds tend to be all aligned in a row. So I'm just going to make them like a like little bunch of army soldiers. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. So they're nearer to the the center of the fruit. Where it's lighter here. I will take a bit of uh, dark brown as well, black, just to emphasize like some of the corners where there's supposed to be more shadow and that way the fruits will pop even further because remember they're all shadows they're all shadow areas at the bottom anyway i will post a final uh, image of this tomorrow morning because the lighting that i have now does not do it justice at all also when you're painting like at night try not to use like a yellow light because the problem with yellow light is that you try to compensate by making things cooler in color because so you'll try to make everything like a what is this? a bit bluer so when you look at your painting in the morning the colors might be slightly off as a result How many of you are not from Malaysia? Like we know there was someone from the Philippines, somebody from the US, somebody from Brazil. Why <laughs> my strawberries look terrible? Okay, you know how to improve your strawberries? Just add the seeds to them. Everything gets better after you add the seeds to them. Alright, I'm just gonna show with a white gel pen. Uh let me see. Okay, if you have like a white gel pen like this, this is the signal brand, this is the broad one. Okay, let's say I were to make... Now, strawberry seeds are actually like yellow, but I'm just gonna... <laughs> See, this is a problem with white gel pens. Like, it comes out of my skin, but it doesn't come out on the pain. So... Isn't it funny? Like sometimes I think my painting is bad, but when I look back on it, like the next day when I'm in a better mood, I'm like, it's not that bad. It's just okay, why? You know? It's, I think sometimes when we are exhausted, we tend to judge ourselves a bit more harshly. I'm just 
I just simply do, okay? So, do. Uh, just remember white dots, elongated. Uh, gouache has to be a bit thick, yeah? So, don't make them like, too light. And then, don't try to do it in a pattern where it's like up and down. Like some of the C's bigger, some small. Don't make them all in a row because it doesn't make sense. Okay. I just want to finish this. Just using the residual white to just like re emphasize the lines here. And then I just duck. Oh! Okay, okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay, it's okay. I just want to do the shadow in the raspberry a bit more. Okay, I'm gonna touch up the greens. Okay, so the green I've just put on one layer, I'm gonna make the greens a bit more prominent. So like the shadows, uh, let me see. So this is the... Rinse it out there, and then... Gently taper out the colour as you go inwards. Rinse it out. Yeah! So, what the colour is all about building the layers. So, when you start, it's just like all flat. So, if you could take pictures as you go about your painting step by step. So, one layer, take a picture. One layer, take a picture. And then you can slowly see the progression. And cause, and that gives you more confidence. So, the more you do it, you know that, ah, okay, okay, don't worry. I'm just at the early stage still. You know, I'm going to get there. Man, for those of you who actually didn't paint but watched the whole thing, I have a lot of respect for you. I don't know how you do it. Because personally, I wouldn't have the patience to watch somebody else just sit and paint for that many hours. But I guess you guys went out and then came back, joined the back again. So, welcome back. Hi, Alice. Long time no see. Ah, uh, daylight. Daylight. Definitely daylight. But if I'm indoors, like right now, I'm using daylight bulbs as well. Uh, okay, anyway, I am finishing up as well. Uh, I'm just going to do the outline of the bowl and then I will be done. Please give me some time because uh, I'll need to re-upload the first video first. I hope I didn't lose that. So it's going to be divided into two videos. Uh, I'm so hesitant to upload the videos actually because oh, I talked a lot of nonsense okay so for this one there's like a bit of shadow here and then You can even do like some veins. I made a mistake, so I'm just gonna color the whole thing dark green then. Okay. This leaf. I'm gonna make it darker, the shadow at the bottom there. Uh, over here, like.
I want to eat my kacang parang bersalut chili. Okay. Okay. Okay, so sometimes we have a drawing like that and I get all the stains all over the place. So usually I have this habit of cutting out my drawing so that I don't see all the ugly lines at the side. But then when I, I scan them first and I clean up the rest. So if I'm making like watercolor sheets or I'm making um if I'm making them into like stickers and all that, that's what I do. I just yeah. You all enjoy painting together? Because the thing is, sometimes when we paint alone, we'll be like, oh, okay, la, I'll finish this tomorrow, or I'll just do this later, or I'll just give up halfway. But when you know like, so many other people are doing it with you, you feel a bit more accountable. I mean, in my case, because you all are watching, so I have no choice but to finish this. But nobody's seeing you guys, so... What's keeping you from finishing? Okay, so right now I have a grey colour which I'm going to use to outline the entire painting slowly. Now, I'm not a robot so it's impossible for me to like line the whole thing in a single stroke so I do stop every now and then. Um, and I, chances are it's very hard for me to get like a very perfect line but this is an illustration and I like that an illustration is imperfect. You want to keep the color consistent, the gray consistent throughout. So if I feel like the color's running out, I will just like re-dip it in the paint. But you want to make sure that when you continue, it doesn't look like it's gonna like it goes from like dark to light and make sure it's consistent throughout. Mm, yeah, it's a bit dark here right there. Oh well. I and then and then and then what I sometimes do as well. Okay, so you can put a bit of like highlight here and there. Especially on berries. Or even on leaves. So over here, there's also a bit of like white. You, you can just leave it like that. You can just leave it like that. It's really, really fine. But I just want to show like, let's say you wanted to add like highlight with like gouache or paint. Um, so what we're going to do is the dry brush technique actually. So I'm just going to, I have white paint, white gouache here. And I've dried my brush slightly. So I'm just going to use like the, a bit of a dry brush technique. If it's too, your gouache is too light, it doesn't appear at all, then it just looks like very transparent. If it's too... There's some here as well. So this is dry brush, yeah? So it's very, my brush is relatively dry. And the paint is actually quite dry as well already. Then I think we have some over here, some here. So remember what are the significance of this highlight? It's like the bridge of your nose when you do makeup, so all the high points and the highlights. And I also use white to cheat and cover up all my mistakes on the outside. So let's say I'm like posting this on Instagram and all that. So I just like, ah, try to cover it as much as possible. Because I edit all my photos on the phone and I don't really like put them in Photoshop to make them nicer. Can't be bothered. And that is my painting. How are you? 
You guys. Okay, this is what it looks like from afar. That's okay, right? Mm. Me too, I feel like really, really thirsty. Oh, good. Good way. That is what I want to achieve today, today to prove that watercolor is a relaxing hobby. So, thank you all for being with us today. This was 2 hours and 40 minutes. It's almost the length of a workshop actually. So it, if this was a workshop, it's going to be like 4 hours. Uh, thank you so much. So let's compare it to the original photo. Well, the original photo looks like this. And this is the painting. So it looks like that now. Okay. Thank you all for joining. Um, if you didn't, if you have any questions, uh, if you have any questions, you can I guess ask now. I can still answer while it's live. Um, but other than that, you can refer to the video. Actually, what I can do is if you don't want to watch the whole video of me just talking and showing, I can actually speed everything up, and it can be a very quick time lapse, like maybe like a three four minute time lapse. So the three hours condense into... Do you think... Do you want that instead? Or do you want like a longer video like this? Talking. Thank you, Aini. Thank you, Felicia. Thank you, everyone. You guys are so nice. Thanks, Catherine. Skitty, Chocolas. Okay, I don't know what your real names are. Thank you, Su. Thank you for all for joining. Okay, so I keep the explanation. Alright, I'll try keeping an explanation. But I also do a reels, like a shorter video, 30 sec uh, 30 seconds. 30 seconds is so short. But okay, I'll try do I'll try condense the whole video into like a shorter one as a time lapse version for those of you who don't want to watch the whole thing. Okay. Thank you so much and have a good night.